it was interesting to see the other day that business techno or business techno the twitter account uh, an instagram account that has essentially been at the forefront in terms of calling out all of the playgrades that are occurring in london and all over the place um they decided to basically quit it sounds like it sounds like they've quit it sounds like they decided to hang up their microphone or hang up their uh, their headphones uh put away their sleeves or their vinyl and trudge back into the wilderness because people just simply don't care it feels like about what's going on um i've kind of fallen in that camp recently i've kind of stopped really caring about who's throwing the playgrounds and who's playing i think especially due to the you know m the epic mishandling of covid and the lockdown and vaccinations and stuff like people just need to let their hair down and have a bit of a boogie the people that are playing need to be able to put food in their table and keep a roof over their head and i just don't think i'm in any position to tell people how they should go about making money right i just don't think that should be my uh position i also don't think i should be in any position to tell people what they should and shouldn't be doing especially when you don't have any light at the end of the tunnel to tell you how you will or when you will get back to doing that thing you're being you know you're essentially having to ask permission from the government to allow you to go back outdoors and live your life which is not something that i kind of vibe whatsoever especially considering what we know about the virus now when it was last when it was this time last year fair enough everyone was scared you know what's going on but considering the developers and the developments that we have now with the vaccine and the way things are going in certain sectors it just seems like to keeping ourselves permanently locked down forever until everyone's vaccinated isn't the best way to go about things there needs to be some sort of middle ground in this respect that's not happening so of course people are going to freak out and they're just going to do what they want to do just to kind of let their hair down and enjoy themselves and that's what we're basically seeing covid now of course the exploitive nature of it the fact that people are leaving you know fairly stable economies and countries and heading over to third world countries to go play because the rules aren't as strict it does leave a bad taste in their mouth i have to be completely honest but again we how are we going to go around policing um what the other governments you know around the world do to me it sounds a little bit similar to what the things that people are fighting against about you know uh, british imperialism imperialism sorry imperialism imperialism british imperialism right going abroad to other countries and basically telling them how to run their countries same with what america do in various places across the middle east um and this is what we're kind of doing on the internet right telling these countries that have some very complex politics that we're not very familiar with because we're obviously over here and tell them how to police and do whatever they're going to do it just doesn't make any sense to me long term it's not very productive overall and again people just don't give a shit so if that's the case that's the case but i think um business session have sort of felt it and they kind of felt like they're shouting into the void and they put out this statement this communicado official which is jokes because this is something that you'd see usually um football clubs implementing when they're announcing a transfer or the sacking of a manager so it's quite hilarious that they're taking this approach to it but um again it's interesting considering how everything's changed in the last year or so if this was this wouldn't have happened in september because everyone was like frothing at the mouth to point out people that were playing in places te uh being a whole monitor and tell telling and everyone in it but now things have changed and everyone's kind of feeling a little bit worried and nervous about getting back on the dance or worried and nervous about when they will get back on the dance floor and also annoyed at how their countries have dealt with things people are a little bit more forgiving as to who's going and also you have to be completely honest the people that are playing these playgrounds now aren't the big glitzy business techno people anymore it's your regular people it's your people in the middle tiers right people in the maybe the upper lower tiers who are now playing these events because guess what they don't have any coins mate um you know i'm sure in certain countries marking yourself down as a freelance dj doesn't necessarily guarantee you any um support from the government or no support that's actually going to make any meaningful change so in order to keep a roof over their heads and make ensure they have the ability to return to djing when things open up again they're able to take these very sketchy deals playing in places like tanzania ukraine and parts of mexico colombia and shit and it's just you know it is what it is so it continues here this is from business techno um business tesh no official twitter page communicado official press he says we've started to cover the playgraves in august 2020 
Despite many journalists following our coverage, they stay silent, silent until the moment Dave Clark addressed the playgraves. From then on, they no longer were needed to come forward themselves, but could hide behind the title such as Dave Clark calls out playgraves. Since then, the major platforms have avoided criticizing the industry. Leaders involved, we've done our research and have written articles, often criticized, but always backed up with statistics. We expected that the open letter would get a refraction of attention would not get a fraction of it. It's a good repeat again. We expected that the open letter would not get a fraction of attention. Funny memes get. Resident advisor Mix Mag DJ Mag ignored it completely. Was it tone or is it because they do not care at all for the Black Lives at stake despite their pledge last year? It's not necessarily a Black Lives thing. I think the whole Black Lives Matter situation after the George un untimely passing of George Floyd was a bit performative again. I don't see what some, um, I don't see what that, I don't see how that situation had anything to do with dance music. It was very odd that that sort of kind of got conflated, but I guess it was a conversation about representation, about whatever else could be, but it was a little bit odd, but fair enough. They tried to do something there. It didn't really work. And in general, people just don't give a shit. I think this is what we've basically seen. Everyone that put up little black squares on their profile page when George Floyd died. Let's go back to those people when, ask them what they've done for the quote-unquote black community they've not done jack shit because they don't really give a shit it was performative it touched everyone's heartstrings at the time and they even decided to do it the fact of mixed mag and resident advisor not covering the playgrounds is not surprising too as i mentioned in a few other shows prior um most of the big people that are playing these playgrounds are all under the same i'm gonna say booking agency i forgot what it was whatever the one that peggy goose signed to there's loads of other big djs that are on there that all played playgrounds so um these same people are also the ones that play their streaming events for whatever platform it is mixed mag or dj mag or resident advisor they're also the same people who are married and kind of connected up with certain sponsors so they would never ever going to call out the very same people who end up paying their wages it wasn't going to happen um that was always off the table so it was interesting i was observing from the outside in to see if they would then call out the people who are a bit unattached the ones that are signed maybe to independent booking agencies and stuff would they would say anything and they didn't um, admirably enough right it just kind of decided to play neutral and kind of you know cover their eyes and ears as it was going on in the same way that when the peggy Goo and daniel wang situation was going on no real major electronic dance music you know platform covered it in that regard too because they're in bed with their certain sponsors and management and representation it doesn't make any sense for them to get involved so it continues our work is based on a simple idea helping music journalists by offering the facts about the much care topics so they can easily write about them this is this is a little bit um what you call it what's that word called this is a little bit um this is a little bit self-absorbed isn't it we're here to give you information it's like all right jog on a little bit you're, you're just uploading pictures of people partying to mate um relax so it continues here um the biggest demographic following us are non-poc journalists uh, many of them used to work used our work to write their stories thereby making some money this is all right if we are credited <laughs> bruv whoever runs this page is a fucking weapon um over time we came to realize however that no matter how much work we put into this project selflessly put in this project the big platforms just don't care and will stay silent when their favorite djs are out there in the center controversy for them facts don't seem to matter at all without the help of our great community who actually cares about the black lives at stake our recent open letter would have gotten the same attention um it would have uh, disappeared amongst the internet noise we can't blame anyone except those in the industry who are aware of this going on they know the people behind the playgrounds as well as their motives the decisions to back them up uh, it's conspicuous no it's a conscious one while some people outside the industry can be excused for their silence due to lack of information many people don't know the inner workings of techno industry and have no idea how much money is actually being made so they're likely excused as certain people's behavior you know what most people don't know and they don't care and they shouldn't care i think i can't actually wait until things reopen so i don't have to care about stuff like this it doesn't really concern most people i think i only discovered business techno or this fucking phrase or techno twitter in the first place because i decided to spend more time on twitter during this lockdown most of the time i was outdoors partying putting on raves djing myself you know doing stuff so it kind of avoids you having to listen to all this noise because at the end of the day most of the stuff i've said previously could be addressed and could be sorted out by people actually putting their money where their mouth is and actually putting on their own events 
back in themselves and kind of trying to be a part of the process to fix things as opposed to just sitting there pointing fingers that doesn't necessarily work because if you try and call these people out and try and shame them they don't respond if you try and you know uh, if you try and kind of appeal to their better to their charity or better nature they don't respond either they clearly don't give a shit they're living their lives doing whatever they want to do uh playing the same festivals and same places same lineups running up the same bills polluting the oceans you know flying private everywhere they go but then picking up flipping you know uh debris and litter on the flipping beach and hissing at the camera nonsense right they're all nonsense hypocrites and you know annoying people but it is what it is i think you need to be able to carve a whole different scene away from those guys it doesn't really involve them and do it or get involved in the industry in the system itself and try and fix it from the outside in but this standing from the outside wagging your finger just doesn't necessarily seem to work so far we've not seen it work it continues <clears throat> when our posts are about racism and white supremacy we often get completely ignored the scene with the recent uh by racism post addressing the rns record situation or we get angry reactions these reactions <laughs> majorly written by white men are mostly dismissive and gaslighting the victims of racism with comments like he didn't mean it or he'd need to have a debate about how words could be misinterpreted different languages which is true i'll not be honest though the gaslighting and the and the and the, what was that thing called? And the latent racism is obviously there in the scene, but everyone knew this existed prior to. This shouldn't be a shock and surprise. Again, it's about building and creating safe havens for ourselves. And if we can do it, fair enough. If we can't do it, fair enough. But I think this always existed personally. I don't think this is a whole, whole huge surprise. It says here, maybe it's just doing it completely wrong. Do facts not matter if one favorite DJ is involved? Are the people right when they accuse us of cop behavior? Yep, you're definitely cops, definitely the feds. It says here, are we really the council account that tries to put these very fine people who have no other intentions than sharing good vibes out of business with a single post? Obviously not. Um, should we give these people more years to understand how they harm black lives i don't understand the black lives thing what's harming is it harming black lives because they're not booking somebody that you know that's black is that harming this is an insane statement i get what they mean i get the gist of it right it is cop behavior to be telling people how they should go about you know supporting themselves during a global pandemic it's also hilarious that during this entire pandemic the only people that have been performing and you know making sure they go and tour and not listening to any sort of the mandates and skirting the rules have been stand-up comedians and djs for some reason these two occupations think that they have uh, a divine right to go and earn money outdoors more so than any other person i don't think bands when's the last band you've gone to see bands haven't performed in yonks right in ages but djs and stand-ups have had you know carte blanche in terms of performing in front of a live audience cool fair enough but people go to these things people put them on knowing what the risks are it just is what it is what do you want do you want us to go and round people up with with the police in tow that's super cop behavior that's narc behavior to the extreme do you want people to be locked inside their rooms by force like what is the solution here above this i mean what is it do you want us to go and invade another country and tell them how to um you know how to uh, treat their citizens and how to treat people that are coming into their country what do you want us to do that's what i'm asking and the black lives thing is always odd it's a really odd point of view to take with it i, I get rep representation is one thing but inserting black lives into this it's just odd like why uh let's continue as blau and commented that was the epic in it blau man one absolute weapon remember that <laughs> blau and commented early this year after his fans criticized him for playing a player he says i will not apologize i'm not sorry the party was absolute fucking fire you know nothing of my circumstances <laughs> so much you put in the t-shirt bruv that was an amazing statement in it and i think he posted the picture of an airplane pointing downwards like it was kind of you know careering into the ground or something uh it's flipping insane guy he says yeah so maybe we should just close this project and move on because none of these big platforms will hold any of these ddjs accountable and obviously none of them will speak honestly about their circumstances thank you for the 400 people who cared enough to share our open letter thank you for the few people in that left industry who shared it knowing that some peers would like to see siding with us these platforms don't care about black people <sighs> i don't know do they do they care about anybody probably not if you're not bringing in money they don't give a shit about you that probably goes to say that could probably goes for every single platform but then the funny thing is off the back of that 
resident advisor finally posted an article talking about the raves that are ravaging uh, parts of Tulum in Mexico. Tulum parties rage on as Mexico's COVID-19 death rate jumps to third in the world. And they're attributing it a lot to foreigners going over to Tulum and putting on raves and shit. You know, these shitty tech house parties that they put on where everyone wears big hats and deep v-neck t-shirts. So there is finally some acknowledgement that this actually is happening. I'm not too sure why it took so long for resident advisors to post something like this. They've even got some videos of certain DJs playing here. Um, they've got Sol Solado sound and father and son playing out there. Another clip here shows up some other people playing. So there's obviously an acknowledgement that this issue is happening and it's obviously affecting some people. But overall, no one really gives a shit. And I guess that's just the way that we're at, we're at in terms of the scene. Um, I think when things reopen, people will be in for a very rude awakening. I think all this posturing and, you know, uh, talking in general online about diversifying lineups and having representation, it's all going to fall on deaf ears. Everyone's just going to go back to doing exactly what they did prior. I think we're probably going to see a lot more of these redacted, sealed, you know, private groups, no, redacted um, lineups and things in an effort to kind of hide the fact that all that representation talk they did prior is bullshit or the black squares they put up was really you know again another performative thing that was just empty um and we're gonna see it when things reopen up again you're gonna see all the same people playing at all the same events no real change and it would just be exactly you know as regular scheduled programming and i think there's actually an example here of it um this is a what is it called riverside riverside festival in glasgow right glasgow happens to be in scotland if you're not familiar right and look at the lineup just look at it <clears throat> let's get up here see if you got it, Is it there? Oh. get this off the screen yeah look at the look at the lineup look at that lineup look at it <laughs> does that make any sense to you this is in glasgow right so obviously the friday of course right friday and saturday is pretty you know, what you'd kind of know for a UK-ish sort of festival or for a festival here on these shores, Great British Festival. Then look at the Sunday. Amelie Lenz, Dax J, back to back with Kobolsi, Ellen Allian, Hector Oaks, Ida, Paul the Temple, Slam, VTSS. Come on. Like, why are all these people from Berlin flying over to play a set that you would maybe see in, you know, Grease Mueller or something? Does that make any sense? And again, it's just the same old faces you see here. Disclosure, even Cormac again. He's obviously from he's from Ireland, isn't it, right? But he lives in over there. Um, it's just the same old faces, the same old people playing the same old things. Nothing really changes. All those empty promises fall on deaf ears when the money is involved. But yeah, that's where we're at, man. That's where we're at. I think that might be a good place to end it. Nice and optimistic for the future. Um, <laughs> things don't change, man. Things just always stay the same. Nothing really changes, really, in that regard. It all just stays, unfortunately, somewhere near.